Hey guys, what is going on? It's Dr. Pepper here with an hour-long advertisement about how great Dr. Pepper is. <laughs> nope, it's Alex Williamson and the secret history living in your aquarium. So today, I want to talk to you about lights. And God said, let there be light. And it was good. It's probably not the quote. But light has been important for a long time. And if you want to have a properly functioning aquatic ecosystem, you're going to need light. And not just any light. Because the vast majority of lights that you'll find at places that rhyme with Schmetschmo and Schmetz Smart and, um, I don't know, those places, the big box stores, they are going to have uh, pretty crappy selections, honestly. So in this video, in this, in this uh, sales pitch, no, it's not a sales pitch, uh, I actually want to demystify some of the lighting stuff and maybe tell you guys, for once on my channel, I'll cut through most of the mumbo jumbo. This isn't going to be a half an hour lecture on light spectrums and lumens and par and all that stuff. You guys, if you, if you need to know that, you'll already be at a place where you're looking for specifics on that. And so I'll give you guys a cursory, 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 well, it's hard to say, uh, look at what we need in our aquariums or don't. And I'm going to show you about 10 different lights that I have and uh, the linked ones below in case you're thinking, I don't know what to get. I just want to be able to grow, you know, plants that are like the ones in that tank you have, Alex. Or I want, you know, I've got CO2 and I want to grow killer beautiful Rotala that's blood red and pink and yellow and gold and um, Laganandra Meboldi and uh, Pogo Stemmen uh, Downoy Red and, you know, all these, you know, Limnophilia Aromatica that's, uh, or Hippodroids and, um, you know, things like that. I'll show you what lights you can do that with without breaking the bank and also uh, which ones I would uh, stay clear of because there's some that, in fact, a lot that you can spend a lot of money on and you're just wasting your, your money. You, when you buy a kit at a place like Schmetco or Schmetzmart, uh, you're going to end up with a hood with a light built in that almost assuredly you will have to just go buy a better light unless your goal is to vaguely see your fish and possibly grow some algae and maybe Maramo moss balls, Anubius, maybe some low light crypts and uh, I don't know, Java moss and and uh, maybe well you could probably grow a little bit of duckweed maybe if you're lucky. Uh, oh, we can. Okay, so we have some super chats real quick before I hop in and start talking about specifics. We've got Alan Bauer. The Majestic, the one and only. Thank you, Adam Bauer. Uh, I hope you heard that. We're listening close. Uh, and J Rat Iron Man, how's it going? Rhymes with pet fart. Well, pet farts. Yeah, totally. I agree. I'm glad you paid to shout that out. That it was important to you. Um, yes. Wait, I won something last night from the Greater Seattle Aquarium Club? Me? Like I did? Uh, that's interesting. We had a talk on, uh, we had a talk on, uh, hold on one sec. I need to get my, uh, tripod and I need to open this because I'm useless without my cream soda Dr. Pepper. Woo! All right. How unprofessional am I? I just, I didn't want to be late to my 4.30 appointment with you wonderful people. So I, I kind of started streaming a little disheveled when I was actually plugging in old lights, thinking, oh, they all work. And then I remember, oh, what could go wrong? It's a, a humid room that I store them in. 
and uh, most of them have taken a few jumps into fish tanks over the years and uh, I'm sure they work fine especially the ones that took a jump into a fish tank and then I just put into a closet I'm sure those are just working out great okay so I don't know where my gimbal is and it's making me upset so hold on one sec I'm sorry for the delay but we're letting people filter in I promise you in a few seconds here we will have order to this chaos that, that rules among the crowd hello everyone though hello aquaballs hello G bear uh, hello Sandy Dowdy uh, everyone that's in here oh pff. Oh, guys, sometimes I feel like, well, now I really am losing it. I'm covering up the, I'm covering up the, the light and the lens with my hand, but it'll be worth it. Hold on. Listen to the man behind the curtain for just one moment while I get this situm situated. There we go. That looks better, don't it? Okay. All right, I'm at home. I'm alive. We're good. Crown Tail Half Moons, Muppet, Big Worm, uh, Curtis St. Martin. It's good to see everybody. It's good to see you in here. Uh, also, it is hot as heck outside, and uh, whew, man, it's 95 in my apartment today. So if I keel over and die, uh, please seek proper help for me. Okay. So, before we do anything, before we look at aquariums, before we talk about lights, I do have to show you the terrible focus on this camera. No, uh, the shakiness. Let's activate gimbal. Uh, no, okay, let's see here. So, this is the visual, of course, it was, and then it disappeared. So this is the visual spectrum, and we're going to make that big. And what else we're gonna do is, I'm gonna show you guys a plant curve. This is where plants grow. So here we go. Okay, here we go. Let's get this. So, uh, no, enter, whatever. So apparently uh, the pot people are going to be the ones who have all the, the good details on lights. So, if we're looking at light spectrums, if you want to go out on your own, not buying something that I talk about here, and uh, you want to do some research, the most important thing that's really going to come up is this. And if you look here, you can see that all of our plants, our flowers that grow, grow in our visible light spectrum. And below that is UV lights, black lights. And above that is infrared, like heat, heat vision and things like that. But when you're growing a plant and you want it to grow fast, you actually want some blue light in there. When you want it to flower, which honestly, the reason red light appears in our atmosphere, the sun burns at one constant color, right? But the reason we have this lovely red light is because later in the seasons, when you don't live in the equator air, equatorial regions, light has to enter through the atmosphere, which is a dome, at an oblique angle. And when it enters through at an oblique angle, it has to go through more of the atmosphere and more of the blue light gets filtered away and we see red light. That's what makes it through and reflects off the things around us. That's why at sunset we see the pretty pinks and reds. Well, this also mimics what happens in fall or late summer. And that is when most plants, also in spring as things are gearing up, when things flower. So if you want things to flower and go to seed and think it's the end of their season, 
then you want to be able to control that. And some people do want to do that. Some people want to um, grow Anubius or want to grow uh, Bucephalandra and get it to actually come up out of the water and flower or even cooler, have it flower underwater. Um, you know, or the Kabamba furcata, for instance. I could grow this in the red spectrum and it would come up out of the water and it would produce seeds. Same with um, the super red Ludwigia. They produce a million seeds and flowers. All these underwater flowers, almost all, Okay, wait, no, that's true. All the plants with underwater flowers will blossom underwater. Now, most aquatic plants will do that. Some are true aquatic plants, like lily pads and aponogetans, mostly rhizome or bulb plants, um, but not all by any means. And some grasses and things like that are true aquatic plants. And they'll come up out of the water and out of the water, red light travels much better. So once they crest the water, they come out and they can, they can bloom. Well, if you look carefully, this is a very high-end Twin Star is the name of the brand. And I've linked that in the description if you are so inclined to look for a Twin Star light over a uh, two and a half foot distance, 36 inches, I believe. Or wait, no. Uh, or sorry, no, it's two foot. Is this a two foot? May, I can't remember if it's a 36 or a 48, whatever. Um, 90 centimeters uh, is what it is. But look at the lights. We've got red, we've got blue, we've got white, we've got off-white, and then there's a foggy shroud on it. Well, none of that's on accident. It's, it's a ratio that's uh, figured out how much white light, how much cool white light, warm white light, Green is kind of that middle spectrum. When it mixes with red, it kind of makes a yellow color, as you can kind of see. It tricks the human eye. But that then produces a perfect light for growing, and maybe it can get you to a little bit of flowering at the surface, but that's not the point, because if you're growing things like, say, say you have a tomato bush, and you just love the way the leaves look, you can keep it growing indefinitely as a tomato bush. You can, what we call bonsai it, same with trees, with giant trees. You can keep it growing and never going into its seasonal um, cycles. And this is true with all annuals uh, and, all, um, and all plants that go through a flowering stage. You can hold them. And... You'll either hold them until they pass away, or you'll hold them and they'll live for years and years and years. And then if you hit the red light, they would all of a sudden shift their metabolism. Their leaves would turn red or a different color, and they would start changing the different chemicals that they actually need nutrients-wise in order to create a flower, because that's a very different process than producing fibrous, tannin-filled, cellulose-filled uh, stems. So right now, these guys are using their green on most plants because that best picks up natural light as it comes through the atmosphere and as it is filtered out on, say, a, an overcast day. However, some plants use red or pink uh, or yellows oranges, they use these other colors to actually photosynthesis, to create photosynthesis, because they've traded that ability, or they've traded the chlorophyll, which is always green, for other chemicals, and they want to slow down that rate. They're already at the top of the water, and they don't need to grow at that rate. So really what they're doing is they're kind of pumping the brakes, and your light, when you get to the high end of lights, the expensive lights, you know, the ones that you leave uh, cuttings of plants on, like a frickin' bum, oh, and Peppy the, Peppy the Pigeon, who has, yes, now three weeks strong, two weeks strong, he has prevented anyone from jumping out of the tank. And, I mean, that's a pretty good rim, but those Kochu Tetras were just like, I can't take it anymore, I hate you, Alex. Um... And they were leaping in the middle of the night, like at 3 in the morning for some reason. I kept hearing them flipping on the floor when I'd be awake all night. Um, any case, back to lighting. So, 
when we get to the lighting, most of what you want is going to be in this kind of um, either cool white or red, uh, warm white or in between. So you're looking in this area of visible light. And what I wanted to show you guys is that light actually, this is the whole spectrum. So you guys have probably heard of things like x-rays, uh, you know, uh, this would be like crazy supernovas and things like that. But then we've got everything from radio waves to your microwave to radar, infrared, and then broadcast. So like FM uh, and digital broadcast waves. That, look at that. That is one sliver of this spectrum. And that's everything you've ever loved, you've ever seen is in this spectrum right here. And that's all we have to work with. And we're talking about nanometers. That's why it says NM there. And you see everything is basically 400 to 300 nanometers. In That's the size of the wavelength of light. Now, light acts as a wave. Woo! And it also acts as a photon or a packet, which is like a dotted line. And we'll, we could get all into whether uh, it is a waveform or a pointal uh, packet form. It's a physics conundrum that has caused people to pull their hair out. But we won't get into that. Let's just talk about light. So, long story short about all that boring talk is you have a wavelength of light that you need to hit. You need to produce it. And then you have an intensity level. You need energy behind that. So you could have a little soft red light that's just, you know, a white light with red cellophane over it. And that's not going to do you any good if it's not bright enough to project, reflect, and absorb the energy. Because remember, these plants are literally warming up. They're literally taking the energy from your lights or the sun, and they're turning that into physical power. They're turning that into actual tissue. They're using the minerals, the carbon, uh, you know, the phosphorus, the iron, the zinc, all the little trace chemicals that you may not know why we put in our aquarium necessarily, but they take all those things and they use the workhouse, they use the generator and the gasoline of their construction site in their little biomechanical bio tractors and cranes and, and little worker bees that are in their tissue use light as their go, go, go. And they turn that into something called ATP, which is a general energy source in every living organism there is in the world. And you guys don't need to worry about that, but it's basically, it means that when you're talking about what kind of plants you want to grow, you've got a few ways to control that universal uh, commodity in the plant world of ATP. And that's basically energy. That's what the mitochondria of a cell in every living cell creates and what the cell runs on. So you can either control the strength of your light if it's a photosynthetic organism, which plants and algae are, and some there's some interesting hybrid slime molds and things and aufuchs that we're still learning about, and cyanobacteria that also use it. And then there is uh, eating, so digestion and absorption, which I'm going to count as the same thing. Yes, we eat things, plants eat things. They can either do it through their roots or through their vascular system, uh, through their pores. We can also um, give in or <laughs> get out. We can put out chemicals. We can take in chemicals through our skin and pores. Also, we can create things in our glands. So it's kind of similar, uh, actually, even though we've been apart for 400 and some million years at least, probably more like 500 million years on the evolutionary tree. Um, and we can also control, you know, the soil. So let's, let's put all the other elements aside, the soil, the liquid nutrients, which you guys know I put in, um, you know, trace elements of other things in, you could use aquarium co-ops, easy green. If you want like a once a day, easy kind of thing, you could do root tabs. There's all sorts of things you can do to control 
your food for your plants. However, if we're talking just about the, the light, the light is the variable that we want to control. Basically, you've got your color, your wavelength, and that's your Kelvin or your, your like, so blues would be like 7,000. It doesn't matter that much that you guys know this right now. Um, but also in the nano, nanometer spectrum, those wavelengths are going to be 400 to 450 wavelengths. And in Kelvin, that's like a blue sky. It's going to be like 7,000 or, or so, 8,000. And then down to like a cloudy day, 6,000. And then you're going to get into the 5,000. I know these numbers go up and Kelvin go the opposite way. So that's a little confusing in the spectrum. But basically, your light can either say, let's grow, grow, grow let's flower or let's do something in between. And most retailers have decided, let's do something in between. But there are some retailer, retailers that have said, let's let the consumer decide what, we want, what they want to do with the light. And those people that make those products, unfortunately, the vast majority of those products are sold in lights that are underwhelmingly powered and that are not the best at doing what it is they're supposed to do. So let's take a look over here at my aquarium. It uh, looks like my wife's coming in, so if you hear talking, she's on the phone, it looks like, with family. But here is just a fine, I'm going to blind you all. Let's see if we can get a reflection on this one. And I've been feeding zucchini to the little creatures. So right now I've got this on. A demo mode can you see that so it's got the white lights that are at probably I think like a 6,500 Kelvin or something like that or a 6,000 Kelvin so it's kind of a nice neutral t tone color it picked the middle of the spectrum to just grow plants but not flower them but you can turn off all those things and you can make it go into disco mode to simulate lightning and things or nighttime the moon and this is called the Aqueous Sky by Fluval. Now, there's also an Aquion brand that's like a pet, I think it's Pet Co., that also uh, carries the, this, this Fluval usually, in, in where I live anyways. But this can produce a nice light for your aquarium. The problem is, the deeper we go with light, this is when you need more power. Because things... Even on a day where the room is lit up and you're seeing glare, you can't see what the heck is going on back there. It's dark. So that's where intensity of light comes in. Now this tank is growing plants like Vallisneria, like Crips, like Water Sprite, like Anubius and Bucephalandra that don't need that energy. They don't, they're not, I'm not trying to flower them. Uh, bulbitis, I'm not trying to flower it. They need low to medium light. But even getting to low light is going to be a challenge if you have like a 200 or 300 gallon tank. But I assume if you're doing that, you know a little more about your lights because you're dropping some serious money. So I'm going to assume for the sake of this video that we're really more working with, you know, under 55 gallons for the most part. So that brings me to the other intro level light that I have a link to that I can say works. It will grow you some plants and we'll see these downstairs on a 20 long and we'll see what they look like there. This is called a Nycru and this year after year gets voted fairly decent usually and you know it's it, it sits on a tank okay. Uh, you need to get a glass lid for the tank or you need to have an open tank. I like my tanks open just for the noise, for the humidity, because I love looking down at fish and I don't like the look of condensation. Um, but this light basically has uh, a night setting, a, a medium power setting, and a strong power setting. This is a couple years old now, like five or more. But this light is in the $60 or $70 range, and they make another one that's a little less wide and doesn't have that extra power boost, and it is in the, I think, all the way down to $45 plus tax range. Whereas this little Aquia Sky that has all those kind of crazy features 
Also comes with a little remote. Uh, where is the little remote? The little remote might be downstairs with my other set of them. But uh, it comes with a little remote that allows you to play with all those little light features that you saw demoing. Honestly, unless you're trying to flower a plant, you don't need this. And the ironic part about this is that, yes, it's nice if maybe you have guests over and you want your aquarium to look purple just for the hell of it, just because you like purple. That's cool. But for growing actual plants, it has some settings like cloudy day with overcast, 20% overcast, 50%, 70%. 100% overcast, and those are all fine ranges that you can use, but then it's got like combos. You can add like a bunch of yellow and green, and you can mix all the LEDs to make different color lights, as you can see those diodes that turn color in between the main ones, and you can actually turn off those main white lights that are designed to grow the plants. And that's really a gimmick, honestly. The, the two times where you would need that functionality is if you wanted a red spectrum light or a blue spectrum light. Remember we talked about how the bluer spectrums, the cooler spectrums, grow that vegetative or that early summer, that spring light. You get this kind of, everything's kind of green. I know the reflection sucks right now. Sorry guys, I picked it. Midday, dumb idea. But it's what, what time worked. And you can see you get that you'll get and you'll get some growth. You can see new shoots growing, and you can see uh, nobody's getting any holes. They're not lacking in their uh, in their power. Oh, we've got new eggs by the way uh, over there, Sergio. You stud. So in any case, you could do that and and keep it in the blue range and keep things growing vegetatively. And that's what most lights would do. Would keep it in that kind of cool to medium range, or you could shift it really far red. And you could try to flower it, grow it in that flowering range. And that's if you want to flower an Anubius or a Lily or um, a Bucephalandra. But honestly, this light, like we were talking about, this one I think is 13 or 18 watts. Let's see if it says anywhere. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I think it's 18 watts actually, though, this size. Um, and this is a 24-inch and it actually mounts up to a 36 inch, which is nice. The other cool thing about this light is you can mount it under the lids of many of the um, the, the cases that have a ballast for um, lights that are fluorescent lights, or maybe they already have an LED sitting in the hood of a light at, at say, Schmetschmo or Schmetschmart, and you need to take that piece of crap light that's just like, there's just one row of little white lights in there and they can't grow anything. Um, they barely even illuminate your fish. Well, you can pull these legs all the way out and there's another adapter piece that you can get or it either comes with it or um, you buy it for a couple bucks. I don't remember. And you can snap it into the ballast spot uh, without the arms or with this little skinniness you can then put the lid back down over the edge on, on a lot of tanks. Not all tanks, but that's an option. If you want to keep your lid, that's an option. And that's why we're starting to see this lower profile rather than these big, sturdy, hefty legs. But as I was saying, if you want to flower things with that red light, it's probably not powerful enough unless those plants are right here or they're not underwater. Because every six inches we go underwater, we lose 50% of the intensity of our PAR or lumens, the, the intensity of the rays of light, the energy that can be converted into biomechanical energy. It, it just disappears. And that's why when you go deep underwater, you don't see the color red. It looks like a bluish purple or a plain brown. It's, it's very bleh. And so, you're gonna want a very, very strongly powered red light if you have plants deep down. So this tank is not going to flower anything deeper than a few inches, if that. But you could get two or three of these lights at, at uh, 60 bucks a piece, and you know maybe you'd have something going there. Maybe it'd be enough. However, you can cheat that and literally overpower the spectrum right here 
with something like a floodlight. Now I had these on this tank, you can see it burnt out, it got wet and it burnt out. So that's another thing I wanna mention. These lights, I can say that the Nikru and the Fluval Aquia Sky both can take a dunking. You can accidentally drop this in the tank, you shouldn't, and it'll, it'll survive. You can dry it out, it'll survive. These, not so much, and they get really hot, so it's a fire hazard if it does fall in. Or if water splashes, when say you have an angelfish named Sergio who likes to spit water out of his tank up into the heat sink for the light. But these, you can hang above your tank. I mean, you can hang them this high. It just depends on your cone of light, how much light you need. And you could get two, that's what I did. And I've got a link in the description these things, if you recall them, they're burnt out, but if you recall, they would light things up all the way to the very bottom and keep it in our same color spectrum almost. So these are very intense, so intense that most fish didn't want to hang out near the top in this light. It actually warmed up the surface of the water with an LED light, yet only 30 watts. So that's really crazy in that it, it has that much energy but you can't control the spectrum at all. But as we said, most people don't need to. You're not gonna be messing around flowering aquatic plants all the time. If you are, you probably have ponds outside because you want to pollinate and make new hybrids of lilies or orchids or you know something like that. It's probably not as much inside and you don't need to watch this video. You're probably not watching this video because it's way too, um, basic for the level of detail you're getting into. Maybe we'll do a flowering video. Maybe I'll start some, uh, get some Anubias and some uh, Bucephalandris flowering, some other um, plants flowering, and then we can talk about it. But these guys are the ultimate cheap hack. These guys, are, I think, run around 6,000 uh, Kelvin, and, or maybe 650, six, or 6,500, I should say. And I could, you can mount them here, you can set them on something like this, this, this hinge uh, unscrews and you can shift it. This whole thing, which is 30 watts, they make a 50 watt and they make a 60 watt. I think they make a 15 also, but this is 30. Two of these 30s could grow anything I wanted in this tank here, like that tank pretty much, with, with full color, and that middle spectrum, I couldn't flower things with it usually unless they were very shallow. And that was just simply flowering things by overpowering it with energy. Like I said, you could do, you could kind of steroid it out. But those lights for a two pack, since they're designed to go on your garage or <laughs> on your porch, they're only $30, they're $25 plus tax for two. So, I mean, if you're on a budget and you don't have a top, that is a, seriously the way I would go, is some arrangement of those. And it doesn't need to be any one brand. China Mass produces a lot of these brands, and it gets confusing quickly. But, you know, the brand that I would suggest... Wow, I'm starting to look crazy. I'm getting, I'm getting a little too excited about lights, guys. Let's go downstairs, take a look at some more lights. As I, uh, something about Mary, my hair, um, and we get down into the dungeon. Hope I don't lose you. Hope I don't lose you. Uh, oh, it looks like we have another super chat some point. Um, I should, I, I will get to that in a moment. We are almost done with the Alex shut up, just talk, tell us what we need to know, get over it. So. Now this will be more rapid succession because we got the fundamentals. We, we get what happens. We've got spectrum of light and we've got tone of light and then we've got the power of light and what we want to do. Now for a tank like the ones on these racks, I don't need crazy power. I don't need an, ex an insane spectrum. I just need the light to work to produce enough light that photosynthesis is possible uh, and that, you know, some plants can grow, they can kill the nitrites, the nitrates, and all of that stuff. This is an aqueous sky light, 
set at I think I don't know like five fifty six thousand or five thousand five hundred or six thousand Kelvin, and it's doing just fine. It's not in its party strobe mode or blue light mode or any of those things that you can do with the remote, but it does just fine. And it lights two tanks, actually. This is the 24-inch also, just on smaller tanks. It's a 10-gallon and a 5-gallon. Now, down here, we've got a 20-gallon. You, you may see a slight difference in the light quality. Now, I know there's a blanket. Let's try to step back far enough that you can see it. I know there's a blanket, but the blinding light coming from here, that is because we have a twin star light. And it has a fogged glass effect again. It's slim line. It's literally zip tied up here. And it had struts and legs like the one upstairs on my big tank. But this thing has allowed this lily to grow in less than a week. Go back and watch my other videos. You'll notice it was this big. This thing has just steroided out the tank. All the bulbs are growing. That's because it actually has light that can warm the bottom of the tank that can tell those bulbs as they have their feelers and roots starting to grow as they get right near the surface and they're deciding should i come up yet it tells them come on up we got lots of light and it will also tell your plants don't worry about it we'll have plenty of light um for your your uh your red spectrum see here for your pink i just put this on less than a week ago now and it's actually becoming a problem with the Anubius because see that Anubius, it's starting to get yellow, which is like a burn. Now light green is good when it's growing, but you can overpower your tank if it was, this Hillstream tank was, was set, for the, um, set for the Gobies. And so we've kind of overpowered this tank, which is okay, we'll have to rearrange some things. But this moss in these things, this, it, it's actually an algae, uh, come to tell you. I mean, there's moss on the algae and wood, uh, but this is a Marimo moss ball that ripped apart and I seeded onto several other surfaces. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. But this allows you light to do whatever you want with, and what you do is you can... Um, so let me tell you though about the Anubius. Um, someone said Anubius is not yellowing due to high light. No, it actually needs nutrients. It needs uh, probably phosphates, something like that. Um, it needs nitrates a little bit. This tank, probably not a ton of nitrates, probably more phosphates, probably more potassium. But the light is producing more energy and it was used to growing at such a slow rate for so long. So that's what I mean by it got overpowered. However, these uh hygrophila oh and then you say exactly yeah exactly so sean sorry i'm trying to not dumb this down to a point where it's dumb for people but i'm just trying to kind of breeze through these details um which could have their whole own 10 minute episode honestly because that's just how i talk but you can see everything else turning yellow too so now i've gotten to the point where i've gotten a light that's so powerful i have to buy actual fertilizers um, to put in the water, liquid ferts or root tabs, or get very fast growing plants that need high, high light, like Rotala wallichia or something like that. But for lily pads, you can really get some cool colors. And since I planted so many bulbs in this tank, um, which is a weird choice since I have high, high flow in this tank too, I don't know what I was doing, but I wanted the bulbs to grow quickly so that I could propagate them quickly in another tank. I'm a crazy man. Uh, but what you can do then is you can limit the hours of light. So this tank only gets four hours under this intensity. However, um, those bulbs, by the way, um, if you, oh, the, the flower bulbs, um, these were literally, uh, some have been from Petco or PetSmart. Um, not, of course, the ones I was talking bad about. They were in like a $3.99, like two pack or something for like bettas. But they actually have some decent little bulbs in there. And then uh, also some came from Aquarium Co-op. Um, I think I bought their assorted bulb pack. They're all really from Florida Aquatic Nurseries is where they source them. So there's lots of different, they're just dry bulbs. And so um, 
Yeah. So then here is, just to show you guys, the opposite issue. Here's a light where they put a little bit of red. They put some white. They didn't put a lot of um, thought into this light, honestly. No settings or anything like that. But it's great for, say, shrimp. They don't need to be photosynthetically abused. They can't do anything with that light other than eat algae. And actually, the lower light bandwidths can grow algae just fine. Even light coming in your room from an intense uh, lamp can grow algae, or green water as we call it. And the diatome algae can grow under very low powered lights. Now this is very simple, this is very similar to, and same with the uh, panda loaches, they don't need much other than algae. I don't want to grow a bunch of plants down here. In fact, I want the plants to stay the size they are. I, if I never could, if I never had to do anything with these plants again, other than have algae on them so that these guys could eat it, great. So you can see I have enough agitation of the water that the duckweed's not taking over and that the light penetrates. But another thing to think about is if you have something like red root floaters or frog bit or anything that floats, lily pads, you're going to need an even more intense light to punch down through that, like in this tank. This thing could be all lily pads, and this will still punch light through. And you can see it's got that beautiful pastel color. It's slimline. It's not hot to the touch, really. Um, this one's not because it's a piece of junk. Um, so the last thing I was going to tell you that was kind of cool about these Aquia Sky Lights by Fluval is that you can actually cause certain fish to think it is the wet season. You can trick them. You can trick these fish. Um, ooh, they really like the uh, zucchini in this tank here. All these shrimp, they're all full. Um, you can trick them into thinking it's the wet season by turning on the flashing lights, by turning on the lightning effect. But you'll also have to do a cold water change. Look up my videos on breeding Corydoras and you'll learn, oh my goodness, look at the zucchini getting eaten in there by my blue ram's horn snails. This fish room is like dangerously hot. At least it's getting near the end of the day. Okay. So let's look at another underwhelming light. Nothing, no soil in here. I don't want anything growing. I don't even want algae growing. And that's why this light is perfect. It's a nice white light. It's got staggered, I don't know, 15 nodes. It doesn't fit lengthwise even on this tank, but I can see my fish. It has a nice color, no oomph, no kick behind it. And this is what you're going to be buying uh, as far as if you buy a very intro level light, if you buy almost anything at any of the big box pet stores. Here's another one of those bulbs sprouting right now. This was from the same pack actually. Uh, so it's a mixed bag of what you get. Some are beautiful, some are kind of a little crap as we say in the UK, which I'm not from. Okay, so those are kind of your three levels. You've got your entry level, with a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, super underwhelming. Then you've got your aqueous sky, which is still like, you could maybe flower something in like this level of a tank, very low water, or if it's emer emergent growth coming out, because then there's not, I mean, atmosphere kills light enough. I mean, that's why we see the red at sunset, like I talked about. But water, like I said, every six inches cuts its intensity something like in half. And as you go down, that's in half, in half, in half exponentially. So that for the human eye, by about like 40 or 50 feet in most water, depending on visibility, you can't see much of anything anymore. Fish have eyes that are specially designed. But this thing, yeah, it has the cool light modes and things. And it's only 45 to 50 bucks. It's linked in the description. This one... Don't buy it. That's one that would come with a kit. It should be 20 to $30. Mass produced in China. It has the look of some of the uh, lights, such as the Twin Stars down here, or the Twin Star over here that's not on currently. Let's turn it on in, in just a moment. Um, so this Twin Star here, another great smaller Twin Star, 
and it you can't control anything on it no timer no anything just that color of light and when you have a bunch of duckweed that's going to be a low light tank underneath but i can still grow crypts and all sorts of things this light right here is $159, so it's expensive. You're paying for design. You're paying for that pastel light color that we talked about. Let's see if we can kind of see a reflection of it. Not so much right at this second. Um, but it's an underwhelming light. It's an underwhelming light um, when you get the very cheapest level of an old, old twin star. Same here. This is a uh, some knockoff. It's a Chinese knockoff. Uh, it actually short circuited on me, so it, it hasn't been on a tank for a while. But look how thin it is. So it get it got really hot really easily. It could take though falling into the water over the years. The person who had it before me said it did, and I dropped it in twice. So dry it out and then turn it back on. Voila, no problem. This is, you know what, I'm sorry, I spoke too soon, I just realized this is the Twin Star knockoff. So this is, this is trying to look like the $150 to $350 light. If you want the industrial design, but like the aqueous sky level, that's the one with the disco mode level of light, then get something like this. If you've got a rimless tank and you want to keep it sleek, but you're not growing anything, you're not growing carpeting plants. But if... You want the best of all the worlds. You don't want to think about it. You want to just be able to grow any damn plant you put in your tank. You want to get that, that strong powered twin star that I have upstairs with the pastel or the one behind me. You can turn it down if you're growing all low light plants, which seems a little counterproductive. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't spend $300 on a light to only use $150 of it necessarily. But, I mean, you can do things with it in the future, too. And then we've got this. This right here is my favorite light for most people. They make it in 24, 36, and 48 inches. So it'll go up to a nice uh, length. It's got the arms like the other one so that you can put it under the lid of certain tanks. Or you can stretch it for odd-shaped custom acrylic tanks, things like that. This is a 204 I think it was $215 for this one the medium size it's 150 for the other one and I think it's 250 for the 48 inch so this is the Fluval planted 3.0 there is a link in the description and the coolest part about this one is it hooks up to your phone the 2.0 is great too if you got the last generation from more than two or three years ago but this has kind of those pastel, um, interesting light colors here, by the way. If you guys want to see some cute little fry right here, my angel fry. We'll see if they'll get it down this time. I doubt it. They kill the babies every time. But, um, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth time's a charm. There's the little fry. See them all wiggling? And this light is the best of all worlds. You can turn it down to 50%. You can turn it red, blue, you can turn it purple. It has a timer built into your phone. And for, for the vast majority of fish keepers, if you can stomach the 150 to 250 light, uh, this is at 100% right here. That's how I'm getting the bright reds, the crimsons. I know on the live stream it doesn't look like it. That's how my hygrophila right here is bronze. Aquarium bosa is bronze. Aquarium bosa blue is actually bluish green, like a cyanobacteria. That's how my Rotala is like that as well. Now you can also get algae and things, so you'll have to learn about that. But this light will allow you to grow whatever you want under it. The Crips Spiralis, the, the uh, uh, well, Crips actually, that's not impressive. Crips can grow with minimal light. But some of the things uh, that need higher light, you know, like, um, like the Cabamba Furcata, for instance. Look at how beautiful this is under high light. Compared to if we don't use highlight on it, I wonder if I have a piece of it that hasn't been under the light as strong. Right there. Not much to write home about, huh? Not really. But, I mean, it, it's fluffy. That's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, that light will let you do it. So Fluval, the Fluval planted is what I recommend to most people if you want to grow any plant that you want. 
It's a light that will grow with you. It has a good resale value. And I've dunked it into the tank at least three times because what kind of an idiot puts it balancing on his filters? This kind of idiot. So another option that I've seen around a lot and I bought it just to try it out is the Aquion pendant light. Uh, that is going to be for clipping on the edge of a little five gallon or something like that. It's a very cool colored light. You see the blue and the white. Not for flowering anything. Not for a Wabi Kuza where you're growing flowering plants underneath it. Not much. Even with the, the window right stinking here, uh, even, these plants aren't even that red. My super red Ludwigia is peach. So this will grow bulb plants, crypts, anubias. Um, and it will slowly grow a lot of other plants. But you can tell duckweed hasn't taken over, so it must not be a very intense light. Um, and then the last light that I'll, I'll show you guys uh, in here, these are called rocker switches, and a lot of lights you can buy a timer and a rocker switch for, but they don't come with them. This is an older style light too. You can see the little uh, arms. Those were designed to be on a rimless tank, and this is a... Cree LED bulb light, and that is actually um, a knockoff of a Phoenix. So, if you do want a light that's also similar to the Aqueous Sky uh, that we had over here that does the disco mode that will grow low to medium level light plants, you could get a Fluval Stingray, Fluval Aquas Aqueous Sky. Um, you could get, or a, a Phoenix Sting, is it a Phoenix Stingray? I don't know. It's a Stingray. You'll find it if you look under the name Stingray. Um, and a lot of lights are going to fall in this, this realm. You're not going to find anything better than this at the store, other than, you know, uh, halogen lights and things like that. If you're going to buy bulbs, that's a whole other video. This is LEDs. And if you don't give a damn about your plants, you can get something for 20 bucks online like this. But like I said, get those pendant lights that put out the same intensity as these twin stars. If you really want a cheap DIY, you don't care how it looks. You can hang them from steel cables from the ceiling. You can mount them on glass or acrylic lids as long as they don't warp the acrylic from the heat. You want, want to check that part of it. But... They're real simple, um, and uh, they're real simple, real nice lights, and uh, you know, this is also a nice look if you want the, the cheap knockoff from, from China. A lot of times on eBay you can find these and stuff. Like I said, it's got enough light to punch through the lily pads and things. It doesn't have enough light to grow very colorful plants but it will grow through the lily pads. It'll grow low to middle light plants. And, you know, like Crip Undulata, it'll give it an okay purpley color, um, even through the lily pads. But it doesn't have that mass spectrum. It doesn't cover the wide spectrum of the cool and warm to simulate the, the plant's needs. So if you don't have the full lights, I'm gonna end on this note, and then I'll look at some questions. But if you don't have full power output, you can't produce energy low in the water. You can't produce energy far from the light. That's just that. So you could turn this to 50% in this tank. You'd probably reduce some of the algae. You'd also cut down on the amount of color down low. However, I don't care about that because I got a bunch of loaches in there right now, so I'm not too worried. A lot of people start throwing chemicals in, they start throwing fertilizers in, and they don't really know what they're doing. They just read that that's what it says on the label. And that's why it's so crucial to make sure that you know what you're doing when you add in these additives. Because just like in this tank where you could easily think that the Anubius is simply burning because I put a hot light on it, it's burning because it doesn't have the energy right now, it doesn't have the nutrients to grow. So those leaves are growing faster than the the, the physical uh, stuff of life, but not the ATP. They got plenty of ATP, 
but they don't have the carbon, they don't have the potassium, they don't have the phosphates. Phosphates control metabolism or how fast you grow. Carbon is the scaffolding, the iron uh, and the cement of your uh, skyscraper if, you're, if your plants are considered a skyscraper. So it's got all the electricity, but none of the building materials showed up. So that's where you work in tandem. And you can then tone down the amount of money you spend, and that's where you could spend money on this. Use a good amount of FERTs, but if you use too much, it's a problem too. So you got to kind of dial it in. You got to go a little, a little more, a little more. Oh, went too high, went back, go down a level. But you can dial it in, and that's when you'll find your max potential for your light. The same is true of how long your light is on. And all these lights that I've talked about, there is an equivalent of them in the description uh, below linked. Hold on, we're going to go back upstairs for a sec. Uh, there is a description linked, and you guys can buy them if you want. And um, let's see... Twin Star, fancy, sleek design, will handle any plants pretty much you want to throw at it. The last level that's in the description is a Kessel light. This is really for your George Farmer, your really high-end uh, aquascaping. It reflects off the water beautifully. You'll see light reflections on the ceiling, you know. It'll grow flowering plants underwater, depending on how you set it and what fertilizer you use. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We have these crazy wildfires right now, and uh, it's killing my asthma and killing, killing our visibility and everything. Usually, you guys know you can see out across the little valley here. So, I'm going to have to sit down in a sec. I'm like out of breath. It's too hot. And then we've got the intro level lights, the tadas, the night crew, and the aqueous sky, which are fine. Um, and, you know, those are kind of your options. The Kessel that I linked, it's $350. It goes all the way to like $800 for them. Most of those are pendant lights. And they are spotlights. They can keep the light right in the aquarium. They don't make the whole room glow. They'll make the water shimmer and they'll, they'll have a very, very specific bandwidth that has been programmed and psychologically studied to please you. Um, <laughs> but what that is, is different for everyone. So for, for instance, Finex lights tend to be a warm red. If you have goldfish, get a Finex. For low light, just for looking at them and low light plants, a Finex is great. Or a Stingray, those are great lights. I don't even know if they make both of those currently, but great lights. Aquarium Co-op has them all throughout their store, one or the other. But if you want something that can grow all this, isn't quite as sleek and maybe doesn't, it's not quite as bright, then get the Fluval planted. That is really what I would recommend. Or the Floodlights by Cree LEDs. You can buy any brand, honestly. You're looking for the, the wattage and the lumens, but I put a link to some that are $12.50 each and you get two for $25, so. <sighs> Great. All right, guys. Thanks for holding on with me. If you miss something, you can go back. Mm, sorry, I drank too fast. So rude of me. Oh, I'm like dying here today. Very muggy in here. But that is... That's it. That's what you really need to know if you want to buy an aquarium light. The vast majority of kits and things like that, they suck. Um, sorry, they do. The best kits will get you overpriced, mediocre lights that are low to medium plant light and maybe make your fish look okay. Really, you want to wait for the dollar per gallon tank sale or get a custom or a used tank. Get some good substrate with some root tabs, learn about liquid fertilizer, 
and buy yourself a Fluval $150 uh, light. You'll, you can resell it for $50 to $100 easily, depending on how long later. And, you know, it lights up your room. It actually has full spectrum light, so it makes you feel better in the dark months. And, um, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of brands out there. I'm just showing you guys the various levels of what I own. I've also, someone just mentioned Hyger lights. There's Hyger, there's Kessel, there's, um, uh, you know, Do Aqua. There is, I mean, even like Mitsubishi and Philips make lights. There's all sorts of lights out there for growing. And some are for aquatic, some are for land. Some are not even for growing. That LED floodlight just happens to be at a perfect aquarium grow light temperature for most of what you'd want to grow. So that's why I recommend those. It's a big cheat, you know, to save people time. And then all you need is the ferts because you're overpowering it. Um, all right, let's see here. So do we have a couple questions? I have a couple minutes and then I got to get out of here. We can actually follow this chat up. Literally, I could probably do it later tonight, but I have dinner with my mother and father. Haven't seen them due to co-morbid conditions. I almost said the name of the boogeyman flu that we're not allowed to say on on youtube thanks a lot obama um let's see here uh hey are the blue and red leds for growing for growing good for aquariums um so you're gonna lose a lot of the red so it's got to be a strong powered light because that water cuts that intensity if you have a deep tank i would say no if you have already one of the cheapo kits or a, a light that just gives you exposure to the um, to the uh, the bare necessities of light of white light of cool white light, then yeah, you can you can use those and that works just fine. Actually, um, it, it it will work because the LEDs that have the red and blue on most of these kits aren't that that powerful to be honest. The red and blue part. It's those mid-spectrum light um, colors that really give off the full color and clarity when you want to see that metallic shimmer on your fish, you know? When you want to see the subtleties of, um, let's turn this around. It probably won't show live because uh, why would it? But when you want to see the blue in the tail rather than just white or clear, when you want to see neon colors rather than just pink, you want to see like day glow, like really bright, like looks like they have a light source inside them. That's when you want the greens and the mid spectrum colors. But simply to grow, yes, you could use a mid power to low power white light with some red and blue lights. I wouldn't recommend it. That's more for fruits and veggies, things like uh, that. <laughs> Jay. Rad, I just saw your super chat again. I think I missed someone's super chat, and I am so sorry. If it was a question, please ask it before I got to get out of here. Um, also, when is the aquascaping contest due? I have an entire video dedicated to that. If you go to my channel and look at the last video I made, it's got all the details in a, I don't know, 14-minute video or something. Um, and... I might be a little flexible within a couple days because I know people will trickle in. That's why we're not judging it and finishing it out until a week after it's due. I get that things happen, and I get that people have work and lives and kids and things like that. I, I understand. Curtis, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it very much. I appreciate you all for being here. I appreciate you guys for being part of the community for getting me past 14,000 subscribers was great. Aziz Light, uh, as J-Rad would say, um, chicken good? That was terrible. Bad Alex, uh, bad Mia Jovovich quote. Um, and yeah, if you guys want, I'll, I'll let you guys know that if you buy um, anything that I talked about, um, um, Let's see here. If somebody, yeah, if somebody uh, wants to buy something that I talked about that's in the links and they click on it, um, I, I get a small percentage of it. So I just thought I'd tell you that. The, I looked for the cheapest deal on those lights, honestly. 
You may want to support someone like Aquarium Co-op with some of those lights or your local fish store. Honestly, I'd say support your closest fish store if they have a decently close price. But if you're somewhere remote, somewhere that doesn't have that, you only have big box stores, um, Amazon and the links I have are going to be the cheapest. And I get um, 0.5 to 2% depend of the profits um, minus taxes and fees. So it comes out to like, if you spend a hundred bucks, I get like two or three bucks usually, which is a nice little tip kind of thing that I wanted to tell you about. Cause I don't want anything to be, uh, what's the word opaque in the way I function, but yeah. So <clears throat> let's see here. Um, yeah. So do we have any more questions before I get out of here? Oh, Robs, what's up? So, yes. Oh, it's going to be Friday. So, something else that I'll mention in this live stream, even though it may be, this live stream will be seen in the future, obviously, too, because it's about lights. <clears throat> but if you're watching it live, those wonderful hundred or so of you, um, check out the Aquarium Guys podcast Friday on Spotify. I mean, check it out now. It doesn't matter. But on Friday, I will be on their episode. It will be edited and uploaded. There is an extra long, extra nerdy. It's adult themed. Don't let your kids listen unless your kids have a goddamn filthy mouth. Um, <laughs> sorry. That was, uh, that, that was just getting rid of anybody who won't like it. If you didn't like what I just said, you probably, you probably will be a little offended by how, um, the style it is. It's definitely a fun loving but very informative podcast. I talk about the history of the hobby and these guys, uh, the aquarium guys have different folks, different experts on different things in the hobby all across the board as well as personal experience of dozens and dozens of years uh, in the hobby and uh, great guys uh, to listen to uh, on Spotify or iTunes, wherever you listen to your i your your i uh your podcasts see i don't even know the name of things anymore i'm getting old boomer uh and you know you guys i got to get going but i want to thank you i hope that this episode kind of cleared up uh the reasons for uh and you don't have to buy spotify also to listen you you can listen with ads on spotify um, they don't get paid for their podcasts, so the way podcasts work is they usually have embedded content of, you know, an aquarium store or a light, perhaps, that is something that they like or work with, and that's, you know, they'll, they'll have a comment on that for 30 seconds. Uh, so it's nice. It's, it's not a choppy form to listen to. It's great for driving. I try to make videos like this live stream pretty good for driving. You may have to look over once in a while, but that's about it. Um, Matthias, Matthias, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Dan, thank you for coming in too. You've been putting up great content on the Facebook and I'd love to see it keep on coming. You guys can submit your uh, Aquascapes for the book giveaway and the gift card giveaway on our Facebook group. If you hate Facebook, if you think it's the evil empire, and you've left, I get it. I think it's the evil empire, but I don't really care. I don't have anything to hide. Um, then, you know, uh, you can email me if you if you don't want to be on Facebook. And I'll either upload it to Facebook. Or if you don't want it there, I mean, I guess I could grade it. And um, if you're worried about them facially recognizing your fish or some craziness like that, that's fine too. Uh, I won't judge other than the judging I'm doing right now in front of potentially thousands of people in the coming days. All right, guys, uh, I will talk to you later. Thank you so much. Uh, here, Fishy, I love you and your sense of humor, and I will talk to y'all later. Wifey, are we, do we need to go? Is that what's going on? Mm -hmm. What's in the bag? What's in the bag? Tomatoes. Tomatoes, all right. So we got to go, guys. Thank you so much for all the super chats tonight. We should do another eh, another live stream soon um, because I felt like I just scratched the surface today. Um, but Oh, and pizza was great, Rob. Thank you. It was wonderful. Uh, all right, guys. I'm out. I got to cool down. I got to change my shirt. 
I gotta get into my, my formal tie-dye and I will talk to you guys later. Uh, please like, comment, and share. If this is helpful to anybody who's looking for lights and stuff in the future, remember it. Uh, I'll make, I'll try to make a standalone video that's shorter, uh, but I really wanted to be wordy. And like that guy who wouldn't shut up. Hey, Pete, what's up, brother? Uh, yes, I talk a lot. You guys are my friends. I'm going to talk to you like I would my best friend standing right beside me, walking through Schmetchmo and picking out a kit and me saying, Slap on the wrist. Don't buy that. Buy this other, buy this dollar per gallon tank, buy this heater, and then online buy these things. Go to your local pet store for this, and then buy your lights online or at a local store for this price range if you need this or that things. That's what it's about. That's the detail. This is a more vlog style video, as you all know if you're here. And so thank you for joining me. I got to get out of here, guys. Take it easy, and thanks for watching. Bye.